Good morning. Thank you for joining us online. We're excited to share what God is doing in our midst and want to keep you up to date with the following announcements. Lockdown is a time of prayer. Unity lies within the power to hear the same thing from God. Join us on Monday nights for intercession from 8 to 9 p.m. No more intercession at 6 o'clock in the mornings. Explore with us the book of Daniel every Tuesday morning from 6.30 till 7 a.m. We discuss one chapter at a time with a week of exploring in between. Let's search the historical context and relevance of Daniel's prophecies together. Our ministry is funded by the generous giving of our members and friends. Kindly support this ministry by giving towards our cause. We are all affected by the current circumstances, but sadly some are more affected than others in this difficult time. Please help us to help those in need by giving towards our BodyServe account. Good morning everybody. I am standing this morning in a place that is part of God's beautiful creation. And yes, it's just inspired me to share this morning with you Psalm 24, which says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. And I was just reminded this morning of the fact that all of this, everything that is in the earth belongs to the Lord. We can, yeah, we can work ourselves to the bone and try our best, but at the end of the day, all the gifts that we get come from the Lord. And I just would encourage you to consider that this morning as part of the tithes and offering message. Um, yeah, when thinking about giving, just remember that everything that we have was the Lord's first and we're just giving back to Him out of a place of thankfulness and yes, may you be blessed this morning. And yes, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful earth that you've given us, all the good gifts that you give us. May you take the little bit that we give you and multiply it for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye. My testimony is our garden. Um, basically, we moved right before the lockdown came um, and we were living in a one bedroom flat very small didn't have an outside space really um, and now we've got a beautiful garden um, so i'm very grateful for that and i wanted to have peonies at my wedding in south africa but they don't really grow in south africa so i only had three um, of them um, and there's some of my favorite flowers and also we went to Norfolk in March also before the lockdown and we wanted to see the go see the bluebells but um, w when we got there it was parking was really expensive and it was only for the whole day and we didn't have enough time so we ne never um, got to see them uh, but now and I didn't know which flowers were in my garden but now I've discovered that we have um, bluebells, Spanish bluebells and peonies growing in our own garden. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited and I just feel very blessed and that God just loves these, knows these small details and desires of our heart. I'm just showing you the, there's the peonies and the bluebells over there. that some of you at least had a laugh um, for uh, all the props that I prepared for you this morning. Uh, I want to talk about can you be joyful? Can you be joyful in the Lord? And, um, and I hope that at least I, uh, some of you at least found it uh, amusing this morning. Um, 
Yeah, I think during this lockdown time, we uh, talk so much about um, just the pandemic and uh, its influence over our lives, but we often forget one of the greatest issues of our time is the one of of mental illness and the one of depression and, and negativity that reigns not just in um, non-Christians, but in Christian lives. And uh, it's something that I can't uh, speak about in depth this morning, uh, but we, can't, we can at least start the conversation. And I want to, um, to just bring a little bit of a biblical perspective, and then we're going to look at a few testimonies that, um, that might just um, this morning help you to, to be inspired about the hope that uh, is in Christ. Joy is a feeling. Um, according to the Baker's uh, Encyclopedia of the Bible, it says, Joy is a feeling called forth by well-being, success, or good fortune. A person automatically experiences it because of certain favorable circumstances. It cannot be commanded. And so um, it gets generated from a place of motivation and source of living. Um, that happens in our lives. And then um, we see a few examples in the Bible. The one is the shepherd that experienced joy when he found his lost sheep in Matthew 18, verse 13. It says, and if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. Also the multitude that felt Jesus um, healed the Jewish woman um, from which were oppressed by Satan for more than 18 years. In Luke chapter 13, verse 17, it says, As he said these things, all the, the, his adversaries were put to shame, and all people rejoiced at all the glorious things that were done by him. As Jesus did miracles, people rejoiced. They were happy. They were excited. They were so intrigued by um, what Jesus was busy doing. Um, and then also the disciples that returned to Jerusalem rejoicing after Ascension Day um, uh, when Jesus went um, up in heaven. Luke chapter 24 verse 52 says, And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Uh, joy was also a feeling of the church in Antioch when its members um, went to the Jerusalem council uh, so that they would not be circumcised anymore. I, uh, I think the men were very glad to hear this news, <laughs> but we read in Acts verse, uh, chapter 15, verse 31, it says, And when they had read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. Um, and it's not just of the pain, but, <laughs> but definitely uh, because they realized that um, people not circumcised were also included into the covenant of God. Something very exciting. And then Romans 16 verse 19 says, For your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you. This is Paul speaking about the Roman um, Christians that he was so proud of. He says, Obedience is known to you all, so that, you re so that I rejoice over you. But I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent as to what is evil. And, um, and then also a love over not doing what is wrong 1 Corinthians 13 verse 6 it does not rejoice at wrongdoing but rejoice with the truth and we know that when we don't do the things of the of the truth if we don't do the things that is pure um, we start to feel defiled and oppressed and so um, there's also then not just joy as a feeling but joy as an action and I don't think a lot of Christians realize this, but uh, this is the one part where Scripture actually commands us to be joyful. Um, so it's not just uh, uh, out of spontaneity, but it's also a place of being commanded by Scripture to do so. So joy as action, according to the Baker Encyclopedia of the Bible again, uh, it says there is a joy that Scripture commands that joy is an action that can be engaged in regardless of how the person feels. Um, this is a joy that uh, can be engaged with regardless of how a, people, a person feels. Proverbs 5 verse 18 says, uh, for instance, that um, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice. It's a command in the wife of your youth. Uh, meaning that you, it doesn't matter who that wife is or is she blessed, is she not blessed, is she nice, is she not nice. 
um, the Bible commands a um, godly person to, um, to actually rejoice over his bride. And, uh, and Matthew 5 verse 11, Blessed are you when other revile and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. So, uh, so Paul is uh, saying that even if they persecute, revile or slander you, make sure to always be joyful. And then um, uh, continuously being joyful, it, uh, it says in Philippians 4 verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16, rejoice always. Um, a beautiful command that we must be joyful, that we must actually experience life. Um, doesn't matter the circumstances, we must be joyful. James chapter 1 verse 2 then, uh, James says that uh, even if you go through various trials, be joyful, count it as joy. Uh, verse 2 says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, which is not easy, um, but the Bible expects us to, to actually get excited about testing because it produces um, patience in our lives and uh, endurance. 1 Peter 4 verse 13 says, But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings. That rejoice is the one of action. So we must always rejoice. Um, uh, that you may also rejoice and be glad, glad being an emotion, when his glory is revealed. Galatians 5 verse 22. Uh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Um, and, uh, and we know that without the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, it's almost impossible to, in all circumstances, be joyful but in christ and in his spirit living and in dwelling in us uh, we can be joyful in all circumstances and there's three things that i want to quickly mention and then we're going to look at some testimonies this morning um, that we've experienced during lockdown so the one is uh, pr present living is that sometimes we are so focused as christians on the future and what god has in store for our lives and we we talk about it all the time. I don't know what God has in store for me. I, I'm praying, but God is not speaking to me about it. Or even the past, what God has done for us. We speak so much about the victories of the past and our testimony of what God has done. And we almost brag about it, um, that we forget about the present, what God wants to do right now in my life. An expectation to, um, to, to, to do the things that God has put on my plate right now. And so we even see this in secular living. It's, um, it's clear that even if you read a business plan or uh, even a book these days, uh, the first thing that you look at is the past of the author, um, the victories that he had. You look at his future, the plans and things that he's busy achieving and going to achieve. And, um, and that is so clear in society today that we, we forget about the present. We forget about living and being present in our current circumstances. And so the world is caught up in senseless bragging and, uh, and over their accomplishments and, um, and talking about the new, next new invention. And it's just never enough. It's just, you know, looking for more, looking for greater things. Um, and yet, you know, being joyful means that you and I find ourselves in current circumstances, being joyful and content in what Christ has put in our lives. And we know that he is in control of our lives. So we can just be obedient in what he is doing right now. And, um, and so, you know, people are so caught up in the current living reality of you know, our TV stars and uh, social media, uh, famous people uh, looking at, you know, social media and even the live streaming of people. I, uh, I was astonished the other day to see, you know, that families are these days even doing live streaming 24 hours a day. Uh, and you can, um, can watch what's going on in their household anytime, which is probably good for transparency, but it's definitely... Um, 
you know, creating such a fake environment. And I want to say to you, you know, we get so fix fixated in what's happening in other people's lives that we forget to live our own. <laughs> that we can only be excited if we watch the, um, the story of live streaming in that famous couple and we think that that is living reality. And, um, and I can tell you, you know, finding joy in our lives is to live in the present and to be aware of what God has called us to do and the journey that God has placed us in. The second thing that I want to mention about joy is that um, there is a flow where the spirit is going. Um, and as long as we stay where the spirit is, there's freedom, there's life, there's excitement. Um, you know, I love spending time with God in the morning because that's the time that he reveals to me what he's actually going to do in my life. Because if I don't know um, and I don't have an expectation for him to operate, I can tell you he's still going to work in my life uh, because he's faithful. But I might miss out on the opportunity to see his hand at work in my life. And so many people are not joyful um, in the Lord because they don't know what God is doing. But the more time we spend with him, the more we are so aware uh, that he's the orchestrator of life. Uh, I love the scripture in John chapter 3 verse 8. It says, the wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit Yo, it's exciting because the holy spirit is just never short of ideas he's always creative and he speaks to us and he reveals to us new things and exciting things that he's busy doing and the more we see of his work the more excited we get um, so i want to say to you this morning stop to be uh to, to in being so fixed on your strict um a routine that you cannot change to adopt to what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. And, uh, and for some of you, I'm going to just mention a few things here because I think some of you uh, are struggling to even uh, think out of the box. Maybe it's time to just dance while nobody is looking. Um, and even when they are looking, <laughs> uh, maybe it's time to just run in the park, listening with your, your worship music, you know, aloud. And just, you know, step in, you know, in, in the worship rhythm. Uh, for some of you, it means that you must just go and compliment somebody at the checkout counter. Uh, send somebody a word after spending some time with God uh, to inquire about their lives. Maybe it's time to just buy a gift for somebody God lay, lays on your heart. Reach out to an accountability friend and ask them to pray and give you advice on something that you are struggling with. Um, it's maybe just time to commit in st studying something new. Um, maybe it's just time to reduce TV and mobile time and rather connect with people uh, without disturbance of these things. Um, make a list like this for yourself to, uh, to not get so frustrated in this time of lockdown in your set, set patterns and laziness that you forget to live life and to have an expectation for God to meet people and to, to experience new things. The Holy Spirit is creative and he, he flows. He's, he's always active. Um, I want to be on his page. I want to live the exciting life that he has in store. And then the last one that I want to mention is that thankful lives breed joyfulness. The fact that when we recognize what people has done in our lives when we recognize what God has done in our lives we start to remind ourselves of the faithfulness of God and and even um, the good things that is happening through people's lives we get so negative about people around us that we forget that God can use them in our lives and there's there's also so much good in people um, and I want to encourage you to to start to be thankful, to live a life of thankfulness by testifying, by talking about the smallest things that's happening. You know, I, I, I've got these friends that um, can just make anything to look like the most amazing miracle that happens in their lives. It's um, even their small toe that is just, um, 
you know, healed by God, you know, during this week or, you know, just um, they, somebody gave them bread, uh, you know, at lunch at work and they are so excited about it because God has provided, you know, and, and I love it. I love it when, you know, people live thankful lives, confessing that they cannot live without God and they need um, to, uh, to, to give God the thanks. And I want to encourage you this morning. You know, to step out and even though joy is a feeling, uh, it's something that you cannot fabricate when it comes to feelings. It also is a command in action that while we are, you know, in our current circumstances, we can make a choice to start to live joyful lives, um, to, uh, to live lives of thankfulness and to engage in what God wants in our lives. Let, let us be the light of the world. Let us be those people who are not oppressed and depressed by what the world has to offer, but uh, that we will bring the life in the circumstances that we are in. Next time you get to the bus stop or at the checkout counter, make sure to engage with the person that you are um, do, dealing with. Make sure to know that this is a life. This is a person that you can touch. Um, and this is a person that probably are going through a lot of difficulty themselves. Allow God to just, you know, uh, transform your life and that his Holy Spirit uh, become the, the main attraction for people to, uh, to follow um, in your life. Let us just pray together. Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit and for your fountain of joy that just uh, moves, Father, in our lives. It just springs forth and bring life um, around us. Father, we pray that you will deliver us from any oppression or negativity, Father God, and that you will teach us to live lives um, of fullness as you command us to be joyous, Father, even through uh, difficult circumstances. Father, we choose to, uh, to have life in abundance. Thank you that you are the source of life in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to encourage you if you need any prayer or just need to chat about even the things that we've mentioned this morning, please um, get online. Um, there's um, some links below that you can follow uh, to get in, into contact with us. Uh, we would gladly pray with you. We would gladly uh, walk the road with you. Uh, but may this be a blessing and may we be the light to uh, shine forth to the world. Amen. Okay, let's do this. Yes, we have to share the story. Yeah, it's amazing. In the beginning of this year, God spoke to us as a board and he said, this is going to be a year of financial breakthrough, but we'll have to trust him every step of the way. Uh, it's like standing at the Red Sea and we need to be obedient every step of the way. The Egyptians is uh, right at our backs. And um, if, we, if we are afraid uh, and scatter, he's, um, we will not uh, get the freedom. Um, but so grateful for what God has done in so many ways to come through for us financially. Um, the other picture that he showed us was a boat uh, close to the seashore, a big boat with a lot of provision. And uh, he's going to send little boats with the right provision at the right time um, to, um, to bring to us the provision that, we, that is needed. And we are very thankful tonight. Yes, we just want to say thank you to all our friends and all our families and um, yeah, just for our chauffeur family who stood together um, to help us to, to get to this point of renewing our visas. It's such a miracle for us. Um, I stand in awe tonight of, of just of God's provision. And we just really want to say thank you for each and every one for your contribution. Yeah, and this allows us to uh, extend our visas now for an, an, another three years. Yay! <laughs> and, uh, and we are excited, uh, not because of the finances or even the visas, but uh, because God has a plan mm. for us being here. And um, for souls, we are trusting God, mm. not for finances, but for amazing influx of people coming into the kingdom. Mm. Uh, we pray for that and we are excited. Yeah. Thank you so much for standing with us.
not as really into the details. Um, yesterday I was telling Spiesel that I haven't had watermelon in such a long time and yep. I'd love to have watermelon. And about an hour or two later, a friend of ours knocked on our door and brought us half a watermelon. Amazing. So we're going to enjoy that Hallelujah. now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hi everybody, hope you're all well. Missing you guys lots and lots and looking forward to the day where I can actually hug you all again. Even the good old introverts these days are becoming huggers, so watch out. Um, I just wanted to say that, yeah, I've just been so blown away by the grace and the goodness of God over this time and just seeing how he's um, watched over his flock um, and, and provided for his flock. It's just been so amazing to watch him do that. And even personally, I'm just so thankful still to be able to have a job and not only that, um, I've actually been promoted this last month and it's just unheard of at this time. So really just give God all the, all the praise, all the glory um, because he looks after his, he tends to his flock and um, yeah, just so amazing. Miss you guys, chat soon, bye. Hi guys, um, God has been really good to us in this period and we just want to testify of his awesomeness and his faithfulness towards us as a family um, yeah he's provided us with um, the means for me to to keep working from home um, because I started a new job on actual the day of lockdown uh, so yeah um, he uh, he's provided for us for food um, uh, our landlord has dropped our rent for the next few months um, and Elaine and the kids arrived in the country two weeks before lockdown which I'm really grateful for because it would have been really awkward if and difficult if they were still in South Africa because yeah as you know Elaine's a chef and yeah, the restaurant he was actually working in is now closed down shut because of restrictions and um, so yeah so it would have been difficult but yeah so we've been praying for him for a job in the, for here in, this, in the UK and um, God has come through and provided for him as he, he does. He alone is now working in a, a care home as a cook and we are so grateful to God for, for his provision in our lives and just his grace and his, his mercy. Yeah. Thanks guys, miss you, bye. I don't know about you, but a knock on the door during lockdown was very rare. But I just want to testify how amazing it was for us to hear a knock on our door every time we asked the Lord for provision. As you all know, Ian and I run our own business and um, due to coronavirus, we were unable to generate any income through our business. Um, but, you know, every time we pray and say, Lord, we don't know how we're going to be fed the next week. We had a knock on our door. I had friends coming over, even my neighbors coming over and just giving us flour or eggs. I know Mina drove all the way from Wimbledon and she didn't even know that we didn't have any food at that stage. Chrissy came over one night and just came with bags of food. Food that we didn't expect, but food that was so, so necessary. So we just want to glorify God and also ask you, if you need anything, pray and know that God answers your prayers. He will in the right time. Sometimes it's a knock on the door. Have a great day.